Hey everybody, Eric here. And today we're gonna do a little grading refresher by taking a deeper look at SketchUp's native sandbox tools. So if you're new to grading and terrain, it might be a little bit intimidating at first because it's, uh, it's a little bit more at least complicated to think about, maybe not so much to work with, than it is to do things like objects, rectangles, triangles, squares, sort of basic geometry shapes. But SketchUp's got some really great tools called the Sandbox tools that if you're not familiar with, this is gonna be really helpful for you. And even if you are, it's probably not a bad idea to brush up just to remind yourself what they are and how powerful they are without the use of going to extensions. So let's get to it. So I've got a few exercises set up here. The first thing I wanna do is start from scratch. Now I'm going to need to load my toolbar. So if you don't already have, or if you don't work with sandbox tools a lot, you can go find it under view tool palettes. Um, by default, it's not gonna load and then sandbox. So it's kind of an independent tool set. So in this case, I'm gonna pretend like we don't have any terrain to work with. So we've got just a blank surface, but we want something. Maybe it's a concept terrain. Maybe you wanna do a skate park or you wanna do some landscape mounds or something like that. So what we wanna do is start with actually creating, if you hover over the second icon down, it's called From Scratch. And From Scratch lets you create a grid that you can use to then sculpt. So down in the bottom right corner, you'll see that it says grid spacing 10 feet. So if I kind of started a grid like this, you can see that that's a little bit, it doesn't fit the area that I wanna grade because it's uh, I'm working in a module of five. So what I'll do is I'll just hit escape and when it says grid spacing 10 feet, I want a little bit of a tighter grid. So I'm gonna press five feet. So I can actually set this grid spacing here before I set the grid. So you wanna kind of think about how much detail maybe you wanna work with. So I'm gonna click down and you can see there's my terrain grid or my mesh grid that I'm gonna work with. Now, if I turn my hidden geometry on, you can see it's not just the squares, but they're actually triangles with hidden um, middle, middle lines. So from here, what I can do is we can go over to what's called the next one down. So underneath from scratch is the smooth tool. We wanna to be actually either in the mesh or we want to explode the mesh for this because we need the raw geometry to be able to work with. So I'm gonna come over here to smooth and then you can see what it's asking me for is for a radius in the corner. So if I type in something like 30 feet, you can see that the circle changes. And if I type in something like 25 feet, it changes again. So what this is asking me to do, it's saying find an area within this terrain, click down and hold and pull up. And you can see that there's this offset distance. So this offset distance, that's just telling you how high you're pulling it up. So in this case, I'm pulling it up to six feet and I'm just kind of manually doing this. This isn't meant to be super precise. You just click and pull and then click and pull and you're sculpting these mounds. If you wanted a little bit more control over what you're sculpting, you can pre-select an area first and then use the Smooth tool and then come over here. And what you can see what's happening here is that it's selecting, it's making sure to start with this selection and then it's grabbing everything around the outside of that. So it's kind of a little bit different way to do it. If I wanted to just select a different area and show you that one more time, you can see that what I'm doing is I'm starting with this pre-selected area. And then now when I lift that, I'm lifting it up from around that zone. So just kind of a couple different ways you can work with the Smooth tool from scratch. So on that note, if you wanted to work with a little bit more detail, you can see that it's maybe not, it's kind of like a low poly terrain. If you felt like you wanted to sculpt in a little bit more detail to a particular area, maybe where you wanna put a house or a path, you could always come over here where it says add detail. And if I click on add detail, and then, you know, for example, I'm gonna smooth, but maybe a smaller area. So I'll drop this down to 10 foot for my radius. And I wanted to kind of do some like precise sculpting. So the more detail you have in your um, subdivisions or in your terrain, the more you can kind of have a smoother looking terrain or a little bit more control. So just kind of think about that maybe before you get started. And again, if you're new to Sandbox, play around with it so you can see the difference. Lastly, when you're all done, you can just take the whole thing. And if you want to some soften the edges or the coplanar, so that way you get what is just a smooth mesh. And in order to see that a little bit better, 
I'm just going to give that a color and that one's done. That's that first one is from scratch and smooth. Let's keep going. So another way to work with sandbox tools is what's called from contours. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select everything. And because we have contours already, I don't need to have a grid. I'm going to bypass that and go straight up to where it says from contours. So I'm going to click from contours and there it is. You can't see it because of the color, but I'm going to go ahead and give that a color because my background's white and you can see there it is. It made a mesh. I'm going to move that so you can see that the, it's following the exact same shape of those contours. If you get this extra little bit at the bottom, there's a couple different ways to deal with that. If you turn your hidden geometry on, view hidden geometry, you can come over here and delete those. And just kind of erase them like that. It can get a little messy depending on how complicated your edges and terrain are. Personally, I like to, if I don't care about merging the contours and the mesh, you can just explode this and then that'll allow you to delete this in one go. Or what I can do is just take this bottom contour here, copy it, go into the terrain mesh. I'm going to edit, paste it in place. And what's going to do is it's going to break that bottom edge so that I can double click it. And then I'm going to make this a group and delete it. So there's that. That's from contours. Super easy. If you've got contours, just use that. You've got a mesh. From here, we're going to do from edges. I'm going to delete that because that's our finished product. So from edges, what this means is that I have edges to start with. I have edges that I want to then fill a terrain in between them. So I don't actually have the contours. I don't know what the slope is. I just know what the bounding box is. This is a sidewalk. You can see the sidewalk kind of goes ramps down. And this is like a retaining wall, for example. So it'd be like maybe planting in between a, um, at a park or you know in an office building or something like that. So what I can do is I can grab edges from the geometry, the existing geometry in my model. So in this case, I can grab this edge. I can hold shift, grab this edge, hold shift and grab that edge. So that's three edges, one for the top of the walk, one for the curved walk, and one for the flat bottom of the slope walk. So I'm going to pop out of that group and I'm going to come over here and paste it in place. So now if I hit this, just for example, you can see I've got this edge here and that's going to be the inside part of my slope. So now I can either draw a straight line if I wanted just to have a straight slope down, or I can get a little fancy with it and take something like the arc tool and then use the wall, use this retaining wall as a reference. So I'm drawing straight up or straight down, depending whether I want a bioswale or if I want a mound. And then what I could do is come over here and depending on how I want this, I could either uh, make that tangent or whatnot. So maybe that's a little high for this area, but I'm going to go for it. I'm going to triple click to select all of that area, all of that bounding box and click from contours. So even though I don't have the inner contours, I have the outer contours. Click from contours and there it is again. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click, hit explode. And again, I'm gonna do that double click group delete method. I'm gonna turn my sidewalk back on so we can see it. And just to make it a little bit easier to see, let's go ahead and give this a color. And you can see actually there's the slope. It's kind of like a mound that comes up and there it is. So that's pretty cool. So again, now I'm just taking geometry or drawing geometry using it as a reference. And then I'm using from contours to fill in the gaps. So let's look at two more tools just to make sure that we round out our sandbox tool set. The next one is stamp. So what stamp does is it basically asks you a question. It says, I'm going to do some grading. So I want to stamp an object onto a terrain. So basically like this house, I want to put this house down onto this slope. But what I'm going to need is some of this terrain is going to need to get cut out. And some of this terrain is going to need to get filled. So you can see it's sitting inside the slope here. So it, what stamp does is it kind of tries to guesstimate at the difference of what is cut and what is fill and it creates a flat area for you to set your house or your road or whatever it is that you're building onto. I'll give you an example. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to find the one that says stamp. So it's the fourth one down. 
I'm going to select my house because I'm going to stamp my house onto the terrain and I'm going to click stamp and it's going to ask me for an offset. So the offset is that little red preview and it's saying like how far do you want to stamp outside of your building footprint? So if I said one foot, like I just wanted this little flat space and then that's it, you know, as a transition, I could do that. Or if I wanted 10 feet, like I wanted a big flat area. In this case, I'm just going to put something like four foot. So I have like a walkway or I have like a landing that you can step out onto. And then I want to um, click my terrain. And what it's doing is it's asking me whether I want to go up, in which case I'm going to fill inside that slope, or whether I want to go down, in which case I'm going to cut into the hill. So usually you want to kind of balance it out a little bit. You kind of want to balance your cut and fill. So maybe I want to come up a little bit, you know, so that it's nice and flat there, but not too much because then I have to fill all that in. So it really just depends on what your needs are. In this case, I'm going to go with that and I'm going to drop that building straight down. And you can see that's that four foot offset. So what I meant was is that it kind of creates, that's the grade, that's the slope or the transition between um, where the grading stop, stops and starts and then where it touches the building footprint or foundation. So kind of cool little thing to know how to do, quick way to do that. So lastly, assuming that I've got my house already placed and I've got it graded nicely and it looks like it's doing okay on the slope, but then I might wanna ask the question is how might I get there? So for this, I'm gonna use the drape tool. So this is where anytime you wanna take 2D geometry and project the lines, not an image, but project the lines onto the slope, this is what to use, the drape tool. So I'm gonna click down on the terrain and you can see what it did is it projected the lines straight from the flat 2D path onto the 3D terrain. Now the only challenge with drape tools, sometimes if you have really complex terrain or you have a really complex detailed shape, it sometimes will miss um, a connection point or there might be a break or a gap that it doesn't automatically uh, seal or close up, in which case you can see that the surfaces are not separate. So I want to give this pathway going up my slope a different color, but I can't do that. So what I would recommend instead sometimes is to extrude your 2D line work. So I'm using the push-pull tool just to extrude this. And then again, if you need to, bring it down into the slope if it's not already. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to copy this pathway. Go into my slope group. You don't always have to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and do this just to be safe. Paste in place. And the reason why is I can select my slope, hold shift, and select the pathway and say intersect faces with selection. So if you don't put it inside the group, you have to do it with model, and that's okay, but it might mean it's going to intersect with something you don't want it to. So I'm going to say intersect with selection. And then let's just say I didn't really need this. It was just temporary geometry, so I delete that. And there's my path again, but this time I can, it, I can see that it's separated from the slope, so I can give it a different color. So even if I was doing it from an angle, yes, maybe it doesn't work when I'm down at the grade because I actually have to regrade this and I haven't done that yet. But you know, if I'm looking at it at an aerial or something like that, that actually is useful to have that geometry projected onto the terrain. So that's pretty much it. I'm gonna pull back here and just show you all that we kind of accomplished in such a, long, a short amount of time, which is, we started from scratch, from contours, from edges, stamped, draped, and lastly, intersected with the model. So if it's been a while since you've tried uh, sandbox tools, or if you're brand new to SketchUp and you haven't even attempted to do any grading or terrain, I would say give it a go. Now you know all of the basic tools that come with the sandbox tools, which comes default with SketchUp. So it's considered a native tool, even though you have to load the palette separately. So let me know what you think. What's your experience like grading? Uh, do you kind of avoid grading? Have you never done it? Do you have somebody else do your grading for you? Let me know and we'll keep that conversation going in the comments box. And I'll also end by saying really quick that if you want some more grading tips, you can see over behind this shoulder here is our landscape and site design course here on SketchUp Campus. So we've got basically all those tips that you just saw with a lot more, and we even go into extensions and things like that. So if you start here with us in YouTube, play around with sandbox tools, and when you're ready to take that next step, We'll see you over at SketchUp Campus. So don't forget to share, comment, like, subscribe. Let us know what you think. And I'll say thank you. See you next time.